Hi everybody, this is uh, Algebra 2, Section 3-1, Part 2. We are talking about solving linear systems through graphing. And this last part we're going to talk about is um, just a little description of the different kinds of solutions you're going to come across when you're dealing with solutions of systems. So we're going to categorize our systems into a couple different types of systems. Um, the first type is consistent and then the other type is inconsistent. If if a solution is consistent, then that means there is at least one solution. And if it is inconsistent, that means there are in fact no solutions at all. And we're going to talk about what this means graphically in a minute. But if, there, if the system is consistent, then that has two separate types. And those two types are independent, independent, and dependent. Sorry about the scribbling, but I'm just trying to keep moving. If the, section, if the system is independent, that means there is exactly one solution. And if it is dependent, that means there are infinitely many solutions. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about what those things mean graphically. Wow, that's really ugly. Um, infinitely many solutions. So get that in your notes. Those are four words that I guarantee you you're going to need to know. Uh, you're going to need to be able to classify systems based on the number of solutions. So let's talk about what those solutions might look like. A consistent and independent solution. Oh, I meant independent. I apologize. independent and a consistent and independent solution well consistent means there's at least one solution and independent means exactly one solution so that tells us that our system has two lines and they intersect at exactly one point and that point is our one solution. A consistent and dependent system, dependent solution, well that one has at least one solution but it also has infinitely many solutions. Well for our systems to have infinitely many solutions that means if we graph one of our equations, our line looks like that, and we graph our second equation, this line falls right on top of the first line. We call these coinciding lines. So up here we've got intersecting lines, and here we've got what we call coinciding lines. That means they lay on top of each other. The last situation, let's see if I can figure out how to, how to scroll my screen. I'd love to not actually erase things. The last situation we've got is going to be a inconsistent system. And if we have an inconsistent system, that means we have zero solutions. So I want you to think, if we have a system of linear equations, but we have no solutions, that means the equations 
for our two systems, or our two equations, never intersect? Well, those aren't perfect, but uh, that means that the, equa the lines for our equations are parallel. Okay, so those are the three kind of graphical situations you're going to get. So let's, let's take um, a do a quick example. Let's classify, quite often you're going to get, um, the instruction is going to be classify without graphing. We just talked about um, what it looks like when you graph, but let's talk about how you would classify without graphing. Let's work on the system 4y minus 2x equals 6 and 8y equals 4x minus 12. So if this is our system, and the previous page showed us that figuring out what kind of a system we have is all about the slopes of the lines, let's take these two equations and turn them into um, a slope-intercept formula. Well, if we're going to take this equation and we're going to turn it into slope-intercept form, we're going to move uh, the 2x, we're going to get 4y equals 2x plus 6, we're going to divide everything by 4, and that's going to take us to y equals 1 half x plus 6 fourths, which is 3 halves. If we do that to this equation, well, all we have to do is divide everything by 8. We've already got things in the right order, and we get y equals 1 half x minus 12 over 8, which is 3 halves. So what we've got here are two lines with the same slope. In both cases, the slope equals 1 half. But here, the, the intercept is positive 3 halves, and here the intercept is negative 3 halves. So we've got two lines that have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. That means these lines are parallel, but they never intersect. We have an inconsistent system. That would be this, the answer to the question, classify without graphing. So I want to look back quick on this page. A consistent independent system, well, what are our slopes going to be? Our slopes are going to be different, right? As long as slopes are not equal, we have two lines with different slopes. Somewhere, somehow, they're going to intersect. may not be in a nice, easy, obvious place, but if the slopes are not the same, they are going to intersect. If in the um, consistent dependent case, that's what we just looked at, and the con inconsistent case, oh no, I'm sorry, inconsistent is what we just looked at, right? We looked at parallel lines. The consistent dependent case is, when, is going to be when we look at our equations, we turn them into y equals mx plus b, the m's are going to be the same, and the b's are going to be the same. That is the end of section 3-1. So you should be able to go to Ames and do the 3-1 worksheet. I've made sure the solutions are posted. So as always, please try to do the work first and then check your answers. Copying the answers doesn't do anybody any good. Uh, and uh, I think this video should give you all the tools you need to do the 3-1 problems. So once the 3-1 worksheet is, is done, come back here and, and watch the 3-2 video. As always, uh, send me emails if you have any questions.